yo, what's up, Bulls Nation? Welcome back on the Go Chicago. It's your boy, Mike B. I got my man's big O back with me. I told you guys you're going to see him more around more often. Back here to talk some Chicago Bulls. Um, This episode is going to be about our 2021-2022 Chicago Bulls season review. We're going through the starters and head coach Billy Donovan to give our grade and the percentage of what the chances of their return to the roster next season. Uh, Big O, talk to the people right quick. Hey, well, you know, it's been a good season overall. So, you know, we're going to give out our grades. And, uh, you know, we're going to see what happened through the summer and the next year. Hopefully, I'm expecting an, an, uh, another great year and hopefully a Back. deeper run. Back. So, first up, we got to the table, head coach Billy D. Uh, Big O, you gave him a B minus. And a 95% chance of returning to the roster next season. You want to go ahead and explain that? Yeah, okay. So I gave him a B minus because I, I think that uh Billy he did a good job for the most part. But they they started out with uh like 29 and 13, I think through the first 40, 40 plus games or something like that. Um, I think he did a good job as far as uh you know, allowing the players to play. That I do like about Billy. He, he put him out there. He let him go. I think he's a great motivator. Yeah, fact. And I think, you know, I mean, you look at the past five-plus seasons, you know, the Bulls had the best season since Jimmy Butler. So, um, yeah, I think, I think, I think, you know, B-minus is fair. The reason I didn't give him a higher grade was because – you know, I wanted to see a little bit more when players went out. So, I, you know, I questioned some minor things, you know, adjustments, um, you know, rotations at times. But overall, I think he did a great job. <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> to me, I gave him a B plus with 100% chance of returning. I <clears throat> Only thing I, I take them off a bit was, like you said, adjustments. Sometimes he left gas in there a little bit too long. I think he should have he should have took them out kind of quicker than you know what he uh, did. Um, yeah, I think he did the best he could of what the talent he had around him. So I think overall Billy did a a, a great job with this roster. So best head coach we had since Tom Thibodeau. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah. Like, I, like you say, he's a player coach. Uh, I really think he got through this roster. He, he really coached up the young guys, gave them confidence. So I think Billy Donovan did a, a tremendous job this season. So I'm giving him a B plus with a 100% chance of returning. You said 95 because you said always that slim chance of something happening. But Yeah, yeah thing, things happen, you know, you know, in sports, in the sports world, you know. You know, so 5% may be a little bit higher. Maybe I should have gave it a 99, but 95, you know, almost guaranteed he's going to return. Thanks. So next up we got on our list is DeMar DeRozan. Like my man C-Dub over at the Coon Gap Boys call him Corn Road Kobe. <laughs> um, you gave him an A-plus with a 95% chance of returning. I gave him an A-plus too with a 100%. So basically, we agree on this. Uh, I'm gonna let you go first and go ahead and uh, explain why you get your grade out. Yeah, Demar had an excellent season. Excellent season. I mean, as I continue to watch the playoffs now, I see a couple teams that if, if they had Demar Derozan, like a Dallas or uh, mm. who else, uh, or a New Orleans, mm. uh, things would be contenders. You know, with a Demar Derozan, that's how great he played. I know a lot of people say, you know, especially to, uh, Toronto fans, I came across on uh, social media, they say, well, DeMar always played that way. I'm like, hey, he's always been a scorer, but he's been way more efficient this year. His decision yeah. was off the charts this year. So, DeMar, A-plus, excellent season. Hopefully, I can give you that A-plus next year. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully I can. 95% return it. I left 5% out because, like I say, things change. Yeah. But 95% with pretty much a guarantee to return. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Toronto, he was a scorer, but I think uh, he became a complete player once he went through the whole San Antonio system, yep. pop, and all that. So 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Demar had one of his best seasons that I that I seen watching him play. Uh, really was an MVP type of player, phenomenal. It's nothing more you can say about Demar Derozan this season. To me, to be to be strictly honest with you, I didn't, I wasn't expecting this season from him. I was expecting a a decent, maybe twenty three points per game under the radar, t- under the radar year. I did not expect this huge breakout. I'm not even gonna say the breakout season, but it's it's like you he went unnoticed in San Antonio. Nobody really talks yeah. about him, and then just to come out, yeah, ball out. People say he was the worst free agent signing that this fit wasn't gonna work. Why would you go to Chicago? All that everything they said about him to come out and just have a phenomenal season like that. I'm kind of pissed how the way the playoff you know left because now that that narrative I I feel like they're gonna stick with him by you know the media, not by us Bulls fans, but the media got that narrative about him that they're gonna put on him until he has some success in the playoffs, but yeah. You cannot take away the season he had. Great season, man. So great season. I mean, he could have got. Uh, he could have been in the conversation for most improved. Crazy enough to yeah. say about a veteran guy. Yeah, that's that's how. And you're right. You're absolutely right. Uh, fabulous yeah. season. I wasn't. I was expecting Zach to be the closer, not yeah. Lamar. But he came in and it just it worked fabulously. Yeah. I couldn't yeah. have pitched a better way. It could have worked out. Yeah, so it's like, so how do you think he will follow? Would you be, you know, mad if, say, let's say, next season he have a, a solid season, but not like as spectacular this season? Let's say 24 points per game. How would you feel about a season like that? Um, That's a good question, actually. <clears throat> I mean, I feel like it'll be probably more closer to what we expect. I mean, the guy where he'll be 33, 34 next year. So, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't expect him to – I mean, I hope that he's able to maintain this, this play into next year. But with that in mind, you know, that he's going to – you know, he's going to be a year older and he's aging, you know. So – and we see a couple players now around the league, you know, they, they're getting the mid-30s, you know, uh, getting close to that mid thirty area. And you're starting to see the decline. James Harden, the guy, you know, everybody talking about he's lost a step. So – you know, I'm hoping that we get a great DeMar, but if we don't, you know, give us what you got. And if you anything close to what he was, I think we'll be all right with a better Patrick Williams, with a better Zach Levine, and hopefully some really good additions. Yeah. And I, don't, I don't think – I think he'll be – I think he will – I think he will age fine because he don't really – Use his athleticism like that. I mean, he right, good point. Couple, couple moves he gets to a spot mid range. Like he don't really like. It's a couple of times you see him dunk on a motherfucker, but yeah, yeah, yeah he don't yeah. really <laughs> use his athleticism like that. So I, I think he would age good, yeah, yeah. and he's a smart player. He know how to pick his spot. So I think he will. He will age great. So like Chris but, Paul, like Chris Paul, yeah. and, well, him and yeah. LeBron. That matter, them guys like thirty. 3,900 years old. and <laughs> <laughs> I can see him playing a, a point four type role if he yeah. went once he get older. Yeah. But uh, moving on to the man in the middle, Big Vooch. I got him. I gave him a C plus with a 70% chance of returning. You gave him a C minus with a 50% chance. Uh, since you've been going first these last two, I'm going to go ahead and go first. Uh I think Vooch gave us a solid season, you know, um, 17 points, 11 rebounds. That's that's a good, uh, you know, point percentage uh, for a third, the third row, the, the third, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Third option? Yeah, third option. So, yeah, yeah I think Vooch was played some, some pretty good basketball. He missed a lot of bunnies, a lot of three-point shots, which – Really was frustrating at times, but for what he gave us, it was a solid season. So I, I think a C, C plus, C, C minus, anything in that range was perfectly fine for Vooch. Uh, defensively, he he's not a great defensive player. We all know that. But so I wasn't expecting him to be a world beater, but just for like hitting shots, I need to I need to see more of that of Vooch just knocking down the, them easy shots that he missed this whole season, which was kind of frustrated. That's kind of a slump he had at certain parts of the season, just missing those easy buckets, man. 
But yes, indeed. But just for a third option, 18 and 11, I take that. Yes, indeed. I agree. I totally agree. Uh, everything you just said. Uh, he had a solid year. I'm a, I'm a little hard on him because, <laughs> you know, I, when I when I grade players and I rank players based on, you know, realistic expectations. But you know, I'm a little hard on you because I'm that guy that you know I want to push you to be to your potential. And for me, you're right. His numbers. He had a fabulous season. Actually, he was probably the most healthiest guy all year with Demar. <laughs> So yeah, you know, seventy three games. Yeah, yeah, he did pretty good. So as far as health wise, so you know he take care of himself. What I want to see out of Vooch is everything you said. You know, get down there, make the easy ones. You know, and to add to that, you know, what I want to see to bump him up to a B plus or to an A, I want to see him take advantage of the post a lot mm -hmm. more. Yeah. You know, I want to see you man in the middle. You know, you don't have to be Rudy Gobert. But be a man amongst boys. You know, yeah. I see we see him do it against Charlotte. We see him do it against Sacramento. I want to see him do it against the Joel. Yeah, I want to see you do it. We know we know you ain't gonna stop him, but I want to see you, you know, go to work on those guys and make them guys have to guard you as well. Yeah. So for I sure. think a C minus for me is kind of, you know, I would expect him to see this and be like, that's not a good grade. So I would hope that a C minus will motivate him to come in next year if he's here because I gave him fifty percent because <laughs> because of the roster and everything that's going on going on around the defensive side of the ball mm -hmm. as far as us needing to make some changes. So, but if he's here, I would expect him to come in and get a better grade, man in the middle, and be more of a force in the paint. Yeah, I, to me, I need him just to make those easy shots and, um, you know, knock down the, the open three, which we could have really used that this season. And like you said, uh, take advantage in the post. Like, go after these guys. Like, you you are a highly skilled big man. So just like they skill, you skill as well. So defense, I know Vooch not a great defensive, person, defensive player, so I can't really expect a lot from him but just do the bare minimum what you can do you know uh put a hand now uh box out just do the simple stuff that you can do i gave him a 70 percent because i feel like it's just this, let's just say rudy gobert was to start a center on this team and the way they double team zach and uh damar and Vuce was there for that three i mean gobert Cannot play what that role that Vooch played as just you know being the man that's being left open to knock those threes. He missed those threes, but I will I will feel comfortable with having Vooch take those threes than Rudy. Yeah, absolutely. So that's why I feel like <laughs> don't even be out there, Rudy. Yeah. <laughs> so that that's made me comfortable to think that maybe he will be back. Maybe they will get a a, a big man to back him up. I don't think they replace him. him with yeah. They replace him. So um, next guy on the list, the Paul Patrick Williams yes. gave him a C plus. I almost didn't give him a grade because he didn't play much with a hundred percent chance of returning. You gave him a C with a ninety percent chance. So yeah, let me know what your thoughts on this. Yeah, so Patrick, um, I know we had, we had a conversation on, on on the last show about Patrick. You know, I don't want people that's watching this to think that I don't like Patrick. I love Patrick. Patrick has a lot of potential. He has a lot of tools. I mean, I can see what the people see in him, yeah. but I want to see the motor. You know, yeah. like I understand he's still raw, he's still young, but you in the NBA, go out there and have fun, play hard, leave it, leave it all out there. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes I think I don't know if it's because he'd be out of shape, like you say, he was injured, or if it's just him. So maybe he's out of shape. But sometimes I see, I just see him walking. When when Demar get the ball and he's telling Zach, I mean, uh, uh, Patrick to go from the corner, this side of the corner three to the other side, he just walks. You know, and and me and my brother, we watching the game. He pointed that out. He said, "Dude, he had to cut hard. If he cut hard, maybe that's a a, a bounce pass and a dunk. You yeah. know, so." It's the little things I want to see him do. I think that, honestly, watching Javante Green, not that Javante Green is the greatest skilled player, but just seeing how he runs the flow, how he plays hard, should be 
something Patrick should try to copy. Yeah. Just, just, just leave it all out there. Yeah. But I gave him, I gave him a C for the same reason. He he didn't play a lot, so I couldn't. But I thought that you know when he was here, he did okay. Yeah. Not you know up to my expectations. You know I would like to see him take off. But I gave him also gave him ninety percent chance of returning, which more likely he will be here. But I think that in the summer, you know how it goes when everybody <laughs> things for ages. Bulls gonna get a lot of calls for Patrick as they yeah. did in the deadline. So I left a 10, sure. 10, 10, 10 gap. <laughs> so, and, and, and what we know about AK, if he can win the deal, he gonna, we going to win the deal. Yeah. But I expect him to be back for the most part for next year. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think some of it, I, I think I said the last, the last episode we had, some of it got to do with he, he just, he he played team, team basketball. Like, he let DeMar and Zach do him, you know, I'm there if you need me. Other than, like, being aggressive, like, can nobody tell you don't take that shot on this team? Because yes. everybody take crazy shots. Like, can nobody on this team tell you, Patrick Williams, don't shoot that basketball? Yes. Nobody. Like, you're the fourth overall pick. You're you're the future of this team. So any shot you want to take, take it. Any move you want to make, make that move. Can nobody really tell you don't make that move or don't take that shot? So, like, you're here to get better like the rest of these guys. Like, so he's a big part of this team's future. To me, I think he's the X factor of this team going forward. Um, when the season before he got hurt, I thought he was he was being aggressive, kinda. So he got hurt, and I yeah. think when he came back, he was trying to get used to playing basketball again. Did we kind of see that aggressiveness aggressiveness back into like the Milwaukee series? So it's still a huge question mark, but I see the talent there. Yes. And I know I, I thought this year was going to be that year, but damn it, man, I think next year is really going to be that year for Patrick it, Williams. It got to be. It, it, it got to be, man. Like, two years of just sitting, being thirsty to see if this kid can really hoop. Yeah. Like, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. The guy's built like Iron Man. Yes. <laughs> like, those hands, you know, so. <laughs> like it's another year we just gotta sit back and just wait. Like, is he really that guy? We see the potential, but is he that guy? Yeah, I, we I, gotta I, wait and see. Yeah, we will wait and see. We will wait and see. But I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful for Patrick. I expect him to come in and be a monster next yeah. year, regardless of what happened with the rest of the roster. And I'm expecting a lot of more plays being run with Patrick Williams. I think this this year, though, know, they went DeMar heavy. I think next year, now you know you got a lot of guys who can, you know, create for they, for themselves. You got Zach, DeMar, yeah. Vooch. Mm-hmm. Um, you got Patrick Williams, uh, you know, Caruso. I even throw Lonzo Ball, who we finna get into in a minute. So it's just me on Lonzo Ball. Go ahead and throw that up. I gave Lonzo Ball a B plus with a hundred percent chance of returning. You gave him a B with a ninety five percent chance of returning. Uh, you want to you want to take this or want me to take this? Uh, you go ahead, go in first. Uh, it it for well, Lonzo Ball. What we signed him for? I feel like he did everything I expected him to do. Um, great passing. Um, played terrific defense. Knock down an open three. My main thing I want Lonzo Ball to do is just get a get a mid range and just get a a package move to break somebody off the dribble into like a tag. I just feel like more so often he just set behind a three point line. You know, I feel like Lonzo can do a lot. I see him do it at UCLA, so I feel like he need to get in his bag and. You know, start attacking the basket um, because he's athletic as hell. So it's a lot of things he still can do. It's untapped potential. I don't see him just as a a guy that stands behind a three-point line. He can do so much more than that. So Mm -hmm. I don't know if you agree with me on that. I would sure love to hear your take on that. Yes, you you, you nail on the head. I mean, you hit it. Like, I gave him a B. The only thing kept him from getting an A, A plus is everything you said in his health. I thought for what he was doing in the year was fantastic. He was doing that like to the best ability when it comes to pushing the ball, throw ahead passes, 
you know, getting lobs, you know, defending bigger guys, knocking down threes. I mean, all those things he was excellent in. Like, mm -hmm. like I mean, just watching that part of like that uh, Lonzo ball. To me, I felt like this this is the best version of Lonzo I done seen. You know, like he's he looks good. I mean, the, Lonzo was the the three ball. He once he get a jumper, and then he come to the Bulls and he having six and seven point uh, three point games. You know, knocking down three. So. Um, I think that if he come back and he continue to play that way, he's still efficient doing that, adding that, getting to the paint, you know, getting down. I want to see him get into the heart of the defense a lot more, like you said, you know, get a little, get a go-to move. Because I, I see yeah. him do the step back, but it's always at the three. three you know, yeah. he can do it in the <laughs> mid-range. But a lot of the time, I notice he missed it. And it looked like easy shots, too. Like, yeah. so... Yeah, I think he can, you know, I think Lonzo with his height, with his vision, the way he runs the floor, the way he can shoot the ball now, if he work on that mid-range, he has a chance to be probably one of the top five point guards in the yeah, NBA. For sure. He, he's he's that talented. So I gave him a B, but, you know, his health and just some little tweaks to his game, the little things he just needs to work on will have him at an A-plus next year. For yeah. sure. For sure. All right. I agree. Like I, I want to see that from him next year because I, I believe it's in him. Like I just, I, I, I ain't gonna say I hated him just being by the at the three point line, but I know he can do much more. I know he can, he can score at will. He can, and he can take some of these point guards off the dribble, give him a little uh move package, and he yep. be straight. So yep. um, yes, the best for last, the guy with the big question heading into this Ooh. off season. What's the two hundred and twelve million dollar man, Zach Ooh. Levine? I gave him a B plus, an eighty percent chance of returning. You gave him a B minus with a seventy five percent chance. That's your lowest one I've seen. You gave because <laughs> <laughs> man, like it's like I'm I'm it's like. I, I feel I'm comfortable, but just like that small thing in my mind, just like, ah, uh, maybe. But I was just sitting around thinking, I'm going to get to the whole free agency after we get done with our grades. Uh, I gave Zachary a B plus. I feel like he had a, a great season. Um, really took on that second role. A lot of players don't take on that role too, you know, too nicely. It's always an issue throughout the first year, whether it's not clicking but him and DeMar really clicked nicely. Um, Zach, you know, if you tell Zach to do something, he would do it. You know, people say he can't play defense, worked on his defense. Yes. It's a lot of games he played where his shots were not falling. He he created for others. He played make. He had a, a handful of 10-plus assists games. So, um, I mean, Zach Levine did everything that I could ask for. And I think his season would have been much better if it was for that knee. So that's why I gave him a B plus just because of that knee injury towards the end of the season kind of dipped his grade a little bit for me. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm right with you. I was going to say the exact same thing. I thought Zach was a guy that was, you know, starting out the year benefiting from Lonzo Ball, being in the lineup, getting a lot of easy buckets, um, you know, getting out running, playing defense. I mean, the Bulls was, I mean, I started the year, they were so exciting. I mean, so, yeah. um, yeah, I, I give them a B minus. I gave them the minus, you know, for the health and because I still think that Zach needs to work on uh, a better go-to move. I know he I'm kind just of gonna say that. that but I want to see him work on his handles. I've seen him get ripped up a few times, and I don't, you know, I don't like that for him to be a premier guard and a max player. Yeah. I want to see him, you know, get a get a few go-to moves, get it, a few. And it's know, only it's always against like them ball hawks, like them Drew Holiday, some Gary yeah. Payton, the guys who really yeah. get underneath your skin. Bother though. Yeah. yeah they bother him. So I want to see him work on that. I understand, you know, if your knee aching is hard to, you know, to 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 be flat to move left and right, you know, to you know, do have spins and hezzies and, you know, I understand that. But, yeah, he, if he work on his handle, you know, like when I watch Jordan Poole, I'm like, that kid got a crazy handle. Like, that, that kid, like, step back, hezzy, have spin, hezzy, hezzy, fake, euro, 
And I'm like, God, Lee. Like, so yeah. I, I just envisage, I'm like, if Zach with the way he can jump and, you know, his athletic ability and he can shoot, if he get a better handle, he'll be unstoppable, unguarded. Yeah. You know, Thanks, so man, for sure. So that's what I would say for Zach. Get his get his handles together. The seventy five percent. You know, obviously he a free agent, and I do I know he a West Coast guy. I know I do believe that it's fire to some of the smoke with the rumors. I know a lot of people don't believe him, but you know when you're a free agent and you know you you know got a chance to to go where you want to go, and at his age, at the height where he at, at his career. Yeah. I, I wouldn't think that I wouldn't think that it's crazy he'd be looking at other cities to go play at, uh, other teams. You know, I think all that stuff plays a factor along with the money. So yeah, I sure. gave him a seventy five percent. I think he will return uh, eventually, but the twenty five percent, yeah, it's just a, <laughs> a really good chance. You know, <laughs> yeah. if if I had to bet money on it, I, I believe he returned. It's just so much. So you know, like he just signed the uh, New Balance deal. Uh, what what great place to get that kickstarted here in Chicago? Mm-hmm. Uh, the fan base already love you. People going to buy your kicks here. Um, mm-hmm. You're still even though we got Demar, but you don't. When you talk about the Bulls, you talk about Zach Levine. Zach Levine, Levine is the face of this franchise to me, yeah. my opinion. Um, yeah. You've been a guy here for so long. We can pay you the most money. Like it's only one team that really does scare me, and that's the Lakers. But the only way I think that gets done if Anthony Davis comes to Chicago. I I don't think AK will accept AD because he's you know he's injury prone. But if we can get a health healthy AD on this team, man, this team will be will be some uh uh some some players next next yeah. season because Anthony Davis really solve a lot of our problems if he can stay his ass on the court. Yes. And but, that was <laughs> yeah, that, but that's the only team that pretty much scares me in free agent because like I said yeah. it's LA, LeBron James. That's the only bigger market other than you know Chicago to me is the Lakers. Yeah. So yeah. I think he's come back though. Yeah, I agree. I, I I I'm totally with you there. I had this conversation with a few other people like you know what, what if the Lakers, what if he want to go to L.A. and they want to keep Anthony Davis for that to be their run back, A.D., LeBron, and Zach? Well, I'm and telling it, you for sure we ain't taking Russell Westbrook. Yeah, we, 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 I wouldn't, hey, I wouldn't, well, I wouldn't put it past that we take Westbrook, but see, because I'm, you know, I'm an open mind guy, and I, I try to figure out ways. Where, where, why would it make sense? So we know that if Zach walk, we'll probably only have like 17, 18 million left in cap space. So you you cap uh, struck pretty much, and you got to fill about four or five roster spots. So I think that AK will be in a tough position where he would probably have to take Russ just to be able to eat up some of that cap. But I don't think in that situation that we'll keep Russ. I think if it if it had to happen, we take Russ and flip him to either Charlotte, because Charlotte is rumored to be interested in Westbrook, true, true. or the Pacers. And I think those teams has two or three pieces that might not be as good as Zach, but two or three like a Malcolm Brogdon or a Terry yeah. Rose. That, That's, you know, and we can TJ, get a couple. Uh, TJ Warren. Yeah, there you go. So it, it makes sense yeah. that way, you know, but... Yes. Taking West and Westbrook and putting them with Lonzo, no, I don't see that happening at all. <laughs> <laughs> Since you explain it that way, that that do make a lot of sense. If I were to take on on Westbrook, I will I will take him on knowing that if somebody would take him, like you said, yeah. for uh a Malcolm Brogdon and the TJ Warren, that I feel like both yeah. of those contracts are match up with Westbrook yeah. contract. It is it's not going to be Zach Levine, but it's two guys who you know twenty plus point scores. I can. Yeah. We come, we become a little bit deeper, you know. Yeah. And if you're AK, we need shooters. What TJ Warren do? What do Terry Rozier do? If we can get a Bridges or is it PJ Washington? If mm-hmm. if it's the Charlotte route, you know, yeah. guys that you can just get in and play their roles. And what Luca doing in Dallas? He playing with a bunch mm-hmm. of no name players, but they can shoot and they can guard. That's all they good for. But I love so that put- Pacers deal because I can yeah. have Brogan off the bench. 
There you go. Maybe I bring TJ Warren off the bench. I can I can move Patrick Williams to the three, Demar at the two, to the three, find man. me uh find me at a perfect four alongside Vooch. That's not bad. That's not there. You go. There you but, go. But man, I love Zach Levine though. <laughs> <laughs> you stare, you stare me in the other direction, bro. <laughs> but, but now we uh, know AK is a good so far yeah. he showed us that he ain't gonna play around. So if Zach do decide to walk, I would expect he gonna get compensated yeah. well. He gonna have it so Demar at least be able to have his shooters. And I think the side note to that would be that if Zach walks, now Patrick, you're the second guy now. Now it's your turn. It's your time now. Or so, Ayo might move into that two guard. There you go. Yeah. yeah. There you go. So. <laughs> so before we get up out of here, the million dollar question is: Are you concerned with his knee going forward? I, you know, we got a huge history with <laughs> injuries, man. So, I, yeah. how you feeling about Zach knee? I'm worried, to be honest. I mean, we have to be worried when we went through the whole Derrick Rose thing, and it was traumatized. I got a little PTSD from it. Like Me too, bro. <laughs> Me too. So, to be honest, I would be, like, I be I feel pretty, pretty bad about, you know, we pay him, and then next year his knee is hurting again. Yeah. You know, and now, instead of him playing through it, they're going to shut him down because now they know it's, it's reoccurring. You know, and then not only that, what if Lonzo knee go down as well? So you got two guys with knee issues. So that that go your, your the next four years, and you just pretty much wait for guys' contract to expire yeah. to start this thing over. And I know that's got to be in the back of AK's mind, but I'm pretty sure they're gonna do their due diligence, and they're gonna you know make the best decision what they feel is gonna be good for the team, but. Ultimately, I wish Zach the best. I hope he's healthy. I want to see that man have a great career, whether it's with the Bulls or not. You know, I got a lot of respect. You come through here, you you, you know, you play for us and you do well with us. I always got respect for those guys. Jimmy sure. Butler, the Todd Gibson, the Joe Kim Noahs. I always followed them when they left here. So, yeah, same uh, here. Yep. So, I hope, I hope Zach get that knee together. Hopefully, it's, it's just something that just need a little rest and a little bit of – uh, you know, maybe a little surgery, a little cleanup job. He rested, strengthen it, and get back out there next year for us. Yeah, for me, I'm I'm not worried contract wise because every contract is movable. So you pay yeah. him, you pay him. Really, don't no matter to me. Yeah. He can get he he can get traded regardless with the contract. Mm -hmm. It just I don't want to see him come back off what we built last season. Then it's it all be like, damn, Zach is hurt. So now the momentum just stop. Like, like you said, Zoe can get hurt and just like, damn, we had this momentum of building something great. And now it's getting held back again with injuries. And we already been through this once with Derrick Rose. And it's like to do it again with this team that was special. I think, man, it will, it will crush Bulls fans. Like it will crush me. I know what I crush you. So just to go yeah. through that, just to think about going through that shit again. Yeah. It'd probably be really depressing. I don't think like I'm just coming out of a hole with Bears quarterback now that Justin Fields <laughs> here. So if he's not the guy, then it's like, damn, bro, I literally just came out of the hole of Bears quarterback just to go back in there because he's not the guy. So it's just like when things go good for us. It turned quick, just like that, and go bad. So I'm hoping and praying for the best for Zach. Uh, like, I, like you said, if he gets it back with us or not, still going to follow him, still going to root for him. Got the guy jersey. So, yeah, man, just. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you hit it from the end. That was the perfect end. You're right about that because that, that's the biggest thing, to have all that momentum start out the year good. And then, you know, we getting the notification, Zach, out tonight, saw it with a knee soreness. So, um, it's unfortunate. We know it's a part of sports. A lot of guys, you know, it's always unfortunate when guys' careers get derailed, you know, from the Brandon Roy's mm -hmm. uh, all the way back to T-Mac. You know, it, it's really unfortunate that a lot of great players' health just don't, you know, don't uh, hold up. But, you know, 
hopefully Zach is like is just a sore knee and you know a little rest and a little clean up job and he'll be back next year sure. dunking on people. <laughs> Appreciate you uh giving me your time again, my man. It's uh been great working with you. Like I told you guys, you're gonna see Big O around here a lot more often. Um, go ahead, let jump everybody know where to find you at on all your social media platforms. Yep, Twitter. Twitter, I am the big O. Uh, that's all I got for you right now. But follow me on Twitter. <laughs> Trust me, we we you know send me messages, whatever you want to talk about. I'm 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 my phone always in my hand as as most of y'all. So, yeah, I am the big O, and yeah, that's it. Uh, and next week we'll part we we'll, we'll go through all the reserves and plus the two way players and you guys our grades and the chances percent chances of them returning. Uh, thank you guys for tuning into this episode. It's your boy Mike. Big O on the go Chicago. Catch y'all later. Yes, Peace. Sir.